In this video, we'll, we'll look at some exercises related to converting rectangular and polar forms of vectors in two dimensions. In the first question, we are given some rectangular components of a vector. Uh, number one, let's rewrite this with the bracket notation. Negative four for the delta x and four root three for the delta y. We'll just write it in the standard vector notation to be certain we realize that these are the delta x and the delta y. It's helpful to sketch the vector, and so we see if we were to start in standard position for the vector at 0, 0, then we would go 4 to the left and up 4 root 3. And notice that that's going to make it a bit taller for a rectangle than it is wide. So we have a base of 4 spaces to the left and a height of 4 root 3. So we could actually just launch into the formulas for finding the magnitude r and the standard position angle theta. We know that r squared is equal to x squared or delta x squared plus delta y squared and therefore r is equal to the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared which is going to give us negative 4 squared is 16 plus 4 root 3 squared which is 16 times 3. And here I see uh, 16 is a common factor and if I factor that out I'm left with 1 plus 3 and I can see the square root of 16 times 4 inside, which allows me to take out a 4 and take out a 2. In other words, the square root of 64 is 8. And then we can also see, uh, by recognizing a, a basic triangle here, if I sketch it realistically, well, if we use the formula rather, first we see that the theta reference is going to be given by the inverse tangent of the absolute value of the opposite over the adjacent. And so we were going to have a positive ratio and 4 root 3 divided by 4 is going to be the square, or square root of 3. And this ratio of square root 3 over 1 has an opposite angle of pi by 3. And so we can say that theta, which is a quadrant 2 sized angle, I might put a subscript of 2 to indicate that we are going left and up, um, is going to be pi minus pi by 3 or the angle 2 pi by 3. I would like to recognize that this triangle is a scalar version of a basic triangle um, with a hypotenuse of 2, a reference angle of pi by 3, and an opposite of square root 3 and 1. And so if we were to scale this by an amount of 4, we get this height turns into this height, and this base turns into this base. And so from that we can see by scaling the hypotenuse, 2 times 4, is going to give us the magnitude of the vector that we found earlier. And we can also see the reference angle pi by 3 because we've memorized this triangle. So the next case we have a vector 0 for the delta x and negative 9.8 for, uh, for the delta y. And I'm just going to write it again in standard vector format to emphasize that we have the rectangular components. This vector is going to be sketched in standard position going straight down, and so that uh, we see a certain angle here of 2 pi by, or sorry, 3 pi by 2, and a magnitude of that vector of 9.8. And so we are going to get 9.8 for the magnitude and 270 degrees, or 3 pi by 2 radians. Now we can use the formulas, of course, um, that r is equal to the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared, which gives us the square root of 9.8 squared, which is equal to 9.8. It's the absolute value, so even if we kept the ne negative there, we would get a positive or non-negative output from the square root function. And then the theta reference, if we have, or the theta is going to be tan inverse of the opposite, negative 9.8, over the adjacent, which is going to be an undefined ratio. It's infinite, because we have non-zero over zero. And it's a bit misleading to know whether we are going to have an angle of pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2, which is why if we refer back to the sketch, it is clear that the angle is 3 pi by 2. So going back, the next one we have a complex number, negative 12 minus 5i. Now this is not meant to be i hat because we have the complex number z. And if we look at sketching a complex number in the complex plane, we take the horizontal axis to be the real axis, and we take the vertical axis to be the imaginary axis, which tells us that we are going 12 to the left, and we are going 5 down. And so the complex number 
gets sketched here. If we were to express this then as a vector, I'm just going to create a vector out of this, we see that the negative 12, or the real part, is like the delta x component, the, ru the run of the vector, and the negative 5, the imaginary part, is the rise of the vector, the delta y. And so to convert this, we use the formulas, or we can see making a triangle here. We should recognize a 5, 12, 13 special Pythagorean triple. So we have the magnitude of the vector is going to be 13, and then we need to come up with a reference angle and then place that reference angle into quadrant 3. So we now know that r is going to be the square root of negative 12 squared plus negative 5 squared, which is equal to positive 13. And the reference angle is going to be the tan inverse of the absolute value of the opposite over the adjacent, or the delta y over the delta x. And so we get a reference angle of tan inverse of 5 twelfths, which cannot be simplified without a calculator further. And therefore we get the angle by adding to pi. So we're going from 0 to pi, and then we're adding the extra amount of the reference angle. So pi plus tan inverse of 5 twelfths is our desired direction for this vector. Now we're going to repeat the process. In exercise 2, we're going to take the polar form, the magnitude and the direction, and work backwards to get the delta x and the delta y rectangular components. So we start off with 10 comma pi by 6 radians. And here we are using angled brackets to indicate that we have angled or polar components. And so we convert this into the magnitude, uh, sorry, from the magnitude and the angle, we take the magnitude times the cosine of the angle to get delta x, and magnitude times the sine of the angle to get delta y. Pi by 6 is quadrant 1, so the first and the second components will be, both be positive, and if we have a reference triangle for pi by 6 radians, we see that the, um, if the opposite is 1, the base or the adjacent is root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. And so the cosine of pi by 6 is root 3 over 2, times five, uh, 10 is going to give us 5 root 3. Meanwhile, sine of pi by 6 is 1 half, and a half of 10 is 5. And just for emphasis, I'm going to write this as 5 square root 3 i hat plus 5 j hat. In these examples, I am using the rectangular brackets, or the brackets that look like rectangles if we put them together, to indicate the rectangular components, the delta y and the delta x. I'm using angled brackets for the component form where we have an angle, namely the polar form. Uh, we could sketch this vector, and if we make a vector go at an angle of pi by 6 for 10 units long, we end up seeing a scaled triangle, a similar triangle to the one that gave us the sine and the cosine of pi by 6. And then in number 2b, we have a magnitude of 1 and a direction of 300 degrees. Because the magnitude is 1, we know that we have a unit vector. And we can use the formula that says we take r times the cosine of the angle for the x component, and we take r times the sine of the angle for the y component. And so we have 1 cosine of 300, which is simply cosine 300, and 1 sine of 300 degrees. And so because we have 300 degrees, that's a reference angle of 60 degrees. That's it's a little long. Let me try to make that look like a unit vector. So if we have a vector of length 1, then we're really creating a triangle here, and we would consider that that point would have been a point on the unit circle when we were learning this from trigonometry. We have a reference angle of pi by 6, and the x component is going to be positive, so the first component is the same as cosine of 60 degrees, or rather the reference angle is pi by 3, which is 60 degrees. Meanwhile, the y component is in quadrant 4, so we have negative sine of 60 degrees. And if we just borrow our triangle up here with 60 degrees as the reference, the cosine is 1 half, and the sine is negative square root 3, or the y component. And so we can again write this with the standard vector notation using i hats and j hats. The last example of number 2 gives us a magnitude mg, which of course is referring to mass times the acceleration due to gravity, the magnitude of it, which is g, acting in a direction of 270 degrees. So we are really foreshadowing here, talking about the weight vector, or the force due to gravity vector.
So again, we have our formula, r cosine theta, comma r sine theta, but in this particular case, it's a bit long-winded to consider making that formula approach, because if we just consider the vector has a certain magnitude, call it m times g, mass times acceleration due to gravity, in the direction of 270 degrees, we will immediately see that there is no x component. And the reason for that, of course, is that the cosine of 270 degrees is zero. Furthermore, we have all y component in a negative direction, and the sine of 270 degrees is negative one. So all of the magnitude of this vector is going into the y component and not into the x component. However, it's going in the downwards or negative direction for the vertical component. And we can rewrite this using standard vector notation and simply put it's just negative mg times j hat. Let's check to see how we can use the TI Inspire, the computer algebra system, to convert back and forth between polar and rectangular co components. Um, in the menu, uh, you can go to number and uh, trigonometry, maybe actually the, the fastest way, well it says here convert to polar, convert to rectangular. So you can find some submenus, um, or you could just go directly to the catalog, and from the catalog if you just scroll to the R, you see R converted into P, that means rectangular converted into polar. So if we select this option, we'll select it and then we can put in first of all the X component, so I think we had negative 4 for one of the angles, or for one of the vectors, and 4 square root 3 was the Y component. And the first thing we get According to this, we're looking for the angle theta, so we get the angle of 2 pi by 3. If we edit this and put r, which represents the radius of a circle or the magnitude of the vector, we get the 8 that we saw earlier. Then we can also go back into the catalog and we can jump to the p's. I'm just going to type in p. And it takes us to the beginning of the alphabetical list and we can see polar to rectangular giving us the x and polar to rectangular giving us the y. So if we put in our magnitude, and then the direction, we will get the negative 4 x component back again, or horizontal, and we can edit this notation to give us the y component, and we will get our answer of 4 square root 3. And so some of the computer uh, programs and calculators have this technology, have this function built in directly.